us pray. Father, we thank you that we can come back together around you as the very, very center of life, of truth, of reality, and most of all, of the family. Family love, family care, family belonging. Lord, we thank you that you are like what you have created on earth. The earthly fathers that like to have the family around him. You are in the heavenly uh, sanctuary, the heavenly throne room. And around your throne, you want all your children to come around you. Lord, that is the reality. We are going to experience abundant life. The reality that would change everything in our own life, in the world. Lord, we thank you for your word that helped us understand what is on your heart for us. And today, we thank you that because of your beloved son and his obedience to you and willingness to give up his whole life on the cross so that our wounded hearts can be healed and be brought back to you. Thank you, King Jesus, for opening the door the door of your own body that was broken so that we can enter and return to the very place where all problems on earth can be solved, including all broken relationships, including all broken uh, lives, we thank you, Lord, that today as we come back to learn more and experience more about the prayers that heal the heart, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be with us to teach us. Lord, that you are the real teacher that bring heavenly truth to earth into our hearts. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live inside us to teach us. Give us that faith, truly believe that you are talking to us, teaching us. Help us to truly utter, agree with you, thank you, and accept what you say. And, and reject everything the devil is telling us. Lord, that we will turn from darkness to light. Lord, we thank you that today we not only learn knowledge, but we're going to receive experiences in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start with a, a, a sharing first. You know, right now in Kansas City, um, it's a whole week of uh, prayer around the world, right? Uh, that is uh, um, being led, you can say, from the prayer work in here. And so in the morning and the afternoon, morning and night, there are the prayer rallies and all those. But in the afternoon, instead of sitting down in prayer, you no, know, hundreds and hundreds of people go out into the communities and to share the gospel. But you know what? Most of the time, the instead of just going there to talk, right? 
they were praying for wounded hearts. They were, they were meeting people who say, I am so broken, I'm so sick, I'm so uh, upset and depressed. And before they can even say, uh, let me share the gospel with you. <laughs> they heard all this problem. And the amazing thing is that you know, with the love of God, with the compassion of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, the people just pray a simple prayer, commanding these sicknesses to go. And so many testimonies, testimonies of people feeling, you know, the, the, the healing power of God come and literally out of their mouth say, you no, know, that burden, that sickness, that depression, that fear, that all those things just suddenly, just suddenly come out of me. And I, I, I can breathe now. And, and we can, you can tell, especially when they were on video, right? Their, their face, that was very gloomy, suddenly brighten up and smile, you know? And then they say, you know, who did, who did this for you? His name is Jesus. Wow. Just one afternoon, over a hundred people receive Christ, right? And uh, every day, every afternoon, they go out and see hundreds and hundreds of people here and hundreds of people receive Jesus. Well, that is what we are learning in action. Amen. So just want to encourage everybody that we are learning things that the Lord say, you know, the field is ripe for harvest. It's so ripe. And the Lord say, pray to me to send workers to go out and to, to, you know, to reach out to these people and let them know that God still remembers them and loves them. God is powerful. God wants to heal them and set them free. And uh, it's so exciting. And so this, uh, this week leading up to this Saturday, right? This Saturday um, uh, in a stadium called Arrowhead, more than about 50,000, right? Will be cramming into the stadium, right? For... Um, a whole day night prayer, right? And then from 7.30 a.m., from where we live here, we will have a procession for 12 miles, 12 miles procession, but not on foot, lah, right? Everybody driving <laughs> with police escort, all the, drive all the way to the stadium to fill the stadium. Now, this thing, right, this, this uh, event uh, was actually prophesied 40 years ago, and today it's happening. So it's very exciting, and everybody is expecting great, great things to happen, right? Great things like what? Like one billion souls saved, one billion souls, right, around the world. I don't know how many days or how many weeks it will take, but a lot of people will turn to Jesus because right, of the prayers of God's people, a mighty revival is going to sweep across the world, right? And, and did you know, did you know this good news? That in the Middle East, where the, the Islamic countries are, already 50 50 million, 50 million, not 5 million, not 5,000, 50 million already turned to Jesus. Isn't it exciting? I mean, I have never, never dreamt or even uh, think possible. You no, know, such a big number turned to, turn to, turn to Jesus. 
Of course, in China, in China, 10% of 1.4 billion, right? So 140 million Chinese also turn to Jesus, right? So instead of instead of um, um, no, the, the Western world leading Christianity. Now, it looks like from the East, Middle East, Africa, you know, the, the number of Christians are increasing so rapidly. And um, you no, know, God is doing something that we need to wake up and be alert to, to understand and understand the implications of what is happening so that we will not be hidden in our, you know, little place, right? But be exposed, especially with all the uh, mass media and all those, we can turn it for good, right? So this week, please look at your WhatsApp. I'll be sending, sending out a lot of uh, wonderful messages, right? Coming out from this place. Amen. Okay, now we can go to um, uh, our session today. Well, today is a revision, right? And um, well, our revision uh, is here from America, right? You are 8 p.m., now 8.28. 8, um, we are 7 a.m., now 7.28, right? So we... So we are 13 hours different, right? Okay, what are we revising? Number one, we are revising about seven prayers that heal the heart, right? That is the overall picture, seven prayers that heal the heart. What are the seven healing prayers, right? They are all in the red color, right? It's one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, right? So we go through all this, right? Seven possible routes to sin energy, right? So the evil, uh, wicked uh, power that break and destroy lives, right? What are they? They are the generational sins and curses, ungodly soul ties, unbiblical belief or expectations, inner vows, making promises to myself, traumatic pictures, word curses, and demonic oppression, right? And what do the prayers do? The prayers that we are learning is to break the generational sins and curses, uh, severing or cut off ungodly soul ties, replacing unbiblical belief or expectation from the word of God and renouncing inner vows as me doing in my strength, right? Now, the renouncing is actually a change of ownership. I am not, I am not uh, taking all these sicknesses as my sicknesses anymore. I'm not going to be the owner of these sicknesses. I'm renouncing the ownership. Now, and then receiving divine vision or pictures of healing and breaking word curses and casting out demons, right? So that is the overall picture of what we are learning in this, uh, you know, uh, 15 weeks or more. Right, we already uh, have come to our six sessions now, right? But today it is a revision. Now, it says uh, inner experiences, not academic exercises. You are dismantling a uh, demon's home, right? Now, okay, a wounded heart. What is a wounded heart, right? Heart is the underlying attitude, motive, and character in our lives, right? When you look at 
ourselves or look at somebody or look at a group of people, right? Um, it will take us some time to study what are their attitude, what motivate them, what are their character. Well, that is studying about their heart. If you want to know your friend, right? You want to know your friend's heart, right? You want to know God, you want to know God's heart, right? So the heart uh, is who we are, right? But because we are so busy, right? We, we, we just say hello, goodbye. No, we don't have much time to study and understand the underlying attitudes, motivations, and characters in each person or even ourselves to ask, hey, what is my attitude towards that person like? Is, is my attitude right or not right? No, what is my motive? Why, why am I doing that? Or why am I in this class now? What is my motive? Or what is my character, right? Now, we also need to study about ourselves, our own heart, right? And, uh, and then if we want to have true friends, heart to heart friends, or friendship with God, God's heart and our heart combined, joined together, we need time to do this. So understanding the heart is something which we cannot take for granted that we all do automatically. We, we don't really. Well, so a heart wound is an attitude, motivation or character trait that is opposite to scripture. That is opposite to faith, hope, and love. When faith, hope, and love is lacking in us, we have a wounded heart, right? Our faith is wounded, our hope is wounded, our love is wounded, right? And uh, well, what caused it to be wounded, right? Because there are things that are opposite to the Bible that is happening in us. A heart wound is not an action although action results from heart wound, right? Now, heart wounds, right, uh, is going to be defined, uh, wounded heart, um, uh, in this way. Uh, eight co common heart wounds. Now, normally, Three to five word, words would describe a heart wound, right? Because they describe the attitude, now the motivation and the character, right? In unbelief. There is one cluster, right, of wounds. Anger, hatred, rage, bitterness, another heart wound. We may have all the eight, right? There's rejection, abandonment, loneliness, financial lack, poverty, and failure, se sensuality, lust, pornography, uh, depression, hopelessness, and despair, eh? grief, loss, and sorrow, shame, guilt, and condemnation. Now, all these are broken negative right we may not have all of them as we have and some of us have some stronger than the others right some are really oppressed by grief loss and sorrow others are by shame guilt and condemnation others maybe this maybe failure is the biggest one right or others maybe last and pornography. Now, all these describe heart wounds. In other 
words, these are the real. Now, and then we have Bible verses that show us what is a huge heart, right? The opposite of a wounded heart, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 13, right, is a huge heart radiate faith, radiate hope, and radiate love, right? Now, all of us as children of God, we praise God that there are times when faith just come out beyond ourselves, especially when we know that we, it is it is a, a, a the unhealed heart is instead of faith, fear, doubt, and unbelief, instead of hope, despair, instead of love, anger, and hatred. <coughs> area of faith, hope, and love, you have a heart wound, right? You have hands, government, a divine. But it is a profound it, uh, ex, ex, um, express and or talk about a, your heart as a heart full of God, of course, not ourselves. Right. Have you experienced the healing of God and, and the abundant life of God filling us? Now, that is areas in my uh, kingdom emotion, right? Now, these are areas that um, you know, the Holy Spirit just bring out, right? Because... We have been healed, right? That there is a level of faith, real so mercy, forgiveness, honor, gratitude, praise, belief, worship, thankfulness in an area of my life. Now, this is to emphasize that no body is complete. Right, nobody. What's more is that we may be healed in the area, but that area has many, many levels of depth. Right, so we may be healed on the top level, and after some time, the Lord shows that oh, deeper inside there is still wound. You it, it will be shown, and we go for healing, and the second layer uh, is being healed. Then we learn that. That there is the third layer, fourth layer, like that, right? And the most amazing thing is that in some areas of our life, right, God allows us, allows us to go to the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the pot, <laughs> so to say, to clean out, clean out all the layers, right? And I tell you, if you experience that, you will experience a freedom, you will just like on top of the world, you know, in that area of your life, right? And, and that is what this course is all about, right? To bring us to an area uh, that we experience God himself doing it. And if God can do that in one area of our life, right, we will have faith our faith will be healed more, uh, hope more, love more for another area, another area, another area of our life, right? And that is so exciting, right? Now, the next one is inner healing defined. Well, how do we know? Uh, right, right? 
how are we changed from no hope to hope? How are we changed from no love to love? Change from no faith to faith. How, right? You hold that uh, un that understanding deep in your heart now. How to change it? How to trans transform it? We talk about transformation of life. How? Let us read this together. Allowing God to replace the picture in the art gallery of your mind. Removing pictures that do not have Jesus in them. And replacing them with pictures that do have Jesus in them. Then we are transformed while we look at Jesus, seeing what Jesus did and hearing Jesus talk to us, heals us. We should reflect on this picture. Now, the reality of inner healing is that all of us got many, many pictures in our mind. We can see how broken, how hurt, how damaged, how traumatized. And we can, we can see pictures of all the quarrels and all the failures and all the fear. We got see many of these negative pictures. Right? Now, inner healing is to take these pictures, take them, and allow God to change the picture by inviting Jesus into that picture. Now, that is the work of faith. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, right? And um, that is how uh, everything changes. When Jesus is allowed to come back to our pictures, that we, re we received years and years ago, right? Back even to our mother's womb, right? And have Jesus in the center of that crisis, in the center of that pain, right? With you looking at Jesus, looking at how Jesus love, forgiveness, grace, true power, change the picture, right? And remove the pain and the sicknesses. That is inner healing, right? So what, what, uh, what do we expect? What do we do, right? All the seven prayers require us to allow God to change the picture, to invite Jesus to come into the picture, to be the center of the picture, the center of our lives, and looking to Jesus to transform us, to actually remove the shock, the pain, the trauma, remove the, the despair, remove the negative words, remove all the lies of Satan, right? Only Jesus can do that. That is why all the healings and all the doctors and everything on earth, right, that are trying to bring true healing, right, only give you a part of the healing, a percentage of the healing, right? And um, once we learn the truth of inner healing, we are learning about 100% down to the bottom type of healing. It is possible. And what God has already done on the cross, he has already paid, paid for us to be totally healed, right? Of course, we would say, I wish, no, I would, uh, and many would say, but there are still many areas in my life that are not. Well, why? Why? Well, as we walk with Jesus, 
as we journey with God, we begin to discover that you know, in our journey, God wants us to know the situation of sin in the whole world and how he has provided the answers. And so he wants us, he wants us to experience it, to really uh, remember that there are millions and billions around us on the same journey, but they do not have Jesus. They do not have the healing. They do not have the inner healing. And uh, the Lord uh, is uh, teaching us uh, to really um, experience inner healing step by step. Now, why inner healing works, right? The facts are, Jesus, as Emmanuel, was present when the hurt happened, right? Even back to our mother's womb, even back into our generational sins and curses, Jesus was there all the time. It's just that nobody taught us or told us to turn to Jesus for the healing, right? Now, this, this cause is so important because you and I know the rest of the world need to know it, right? Now, Psalm 139, verses 7 and 8, right, is a, is a verse that really shocks us. It says, if I go to hell, where is, where is God? You are there. God, you are there when I was in the terrible suffering of hell on earth. You are there. But who saw God? Who saw Jesus? Right? That is the question. Now, number two, have you not yet seen him there? That is the problem. Right? Inner healing is lacking because we have not yet seen Jesus in that problem, that sickness. Number three, you need to see him and hear his truth to remove the lies, right? So these are the, uh, uh, the reasons, right, why inner healing works. Now, I want to really, really emphasize this. I've been doing inner healing since the revival in 1990. Before that, I also have been doing inner healing, but I didn't understand, right? I was not clear about the working of the Holy Spirit. But 1990, at the revival, experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing and all that, and the Holy Spirit personally, coach us right to do inner healing right wow uh, we learn but the only only thing i can I, I i regret is that i was so slow so slow to learn because the language of inner healing was not it was not part of my life i didn't didn't know how to understand what is inner healing like now you have all these things defined for you I wish when I was in 1990, I have all these notes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I want to say that from 1990 to now, I've been to many, many courses of healing and inner healing. I want to tell you that the summary here, why inner healing works, is very, very, very deep and very, very true. And it is a real answer, right? Like, like many of us, when we look at this picture, we may say, what is it? What does it talk about? Never mind. The day will come when we will understand. Amen? <laughs> now, the root of all wounded hearts. Well, whatever problem we have, right, there is a root. The root of all wounded hearts are actually from 
generational sins and curses, right? Now, I uh, I like to ask someone to read this while I go and check whether Margaret can come down in a moment. All right, could someone read this for us? Generational sins and curses. I can read the one too. Okay, please, Kunli. The root of all wounded hearts, generations, no sins and curses. This is the first of seven prayer applications which you will be applying to the one heart wound. Three to five words selected at this time. The entire process can be repeated for additional heart wounds later. Each of the prayers which follow in future sessions will be applied to the heart wound below. Set the heart wound here. I forgive my father for passing on to me generational curses. I place the cross of Christ between him and myself as a baby in the womb, and I command all generational sins and curses to heart at the cross of Christ. I release the blessing of Calvary down upon that baby in the womb. Come alive, come alive, come alive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The above prayer deals with generational curses from your father's side of the family. Praying it twice deepen it. Do this twice for your father's side and then twice for your mother's side. Amen. Amen. Now, I have good news for you. <laughs> um, I, I am going to bring this computer upstairs and for Margaret to say hello to all of us and show you the baby, all right? Just for about a few minutes and then we'll, I'll, we'll come back again, all right? Can you see? Wow. It's a chubby little baby. <laughs> Okay, it's it has a little bit of a Evening. Yeah, if you put on your, your photograph, put on your screen, Evelyn, show me your baby. <laughs> Four months old already. Yeah, so fast. Hi, Evelyn. Evelyn, are you there? I can't yes, yes, sorry, I, I was uh, I was busy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Is baby awake? Uh yes. Um she she was crying just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> it really has. So I, is she settled now? More settled? Um, she, my my husband is holding 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 her. Yeah, oh. not her down now. <laughs> yeah, she is better now. I guess. <laughs> A uh, tough time too, uh. This is, uh, uh, so I cannot really focus on this talk. Yes, yes, you are, you're trying to. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> That's why when you ask me for a session, you know, I, I couldn't promise because I, I also can't, can't focus. Yeah. So, uh, sorry? I'm crying again. She's crying again. Are you breastfeeding her or formula? Breast Sorry? Mostly breastfeeding. Mostly breastfeeding. Wow, you're doing so good. Wow, you, how, how many weeks was she again when she was premature? Uh, um, 37. 37. No, 35, 35. 35, yes, I remember. It's very small. Weeks, yeah. And you breastfeed her. Did you pump or lean? Did, did, was lean's pump? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My daughter's in law pump good? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, good. So, yeah. so you breastfeed her through uh, with the, the breast milk from the pump? Uh, at times, yes, but mostly I, I, I breastfeed her. Most wow. of the time. Yeah, then, uh, you know, at times when I have more milk, uh, then I, I use the palm, uh, yeah. yeah. And then you save and it. Yeah. And keep in the fridge, yeah. Keep in the fridge. Have more milk, uh, if I, yeah, if I have more milk, yeah. Right? Mm. And so she will drink from both bottle and, and breast, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, wow, you're yeah. doing very well. So how many pounds is she now? Uh, she is uh, five five point four kg. Uh. Five point four no. kg. At birth. Oh, one point eight five. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. And now it's five point one. So yeah. happy. Oh, yeah. So happy for you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. She according to the nurse, uh, she's normal now, lah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's doing so well. So is your mom helping you? Uh, when when I go back uh, during weekends, yeah, I, I have to, you know, sometimes go marketing, you know. Um, yeah. Well, to do, yeah. The, the tough times are over. <laughs> uh, but um, she, she still cries due to the weather. Uh, it's, it's pretty hot here. She cries. Mm. She cries. Oh. <sighs> mm, yes, yeah. hot. Yeah. Yeah. So stay in the aircon. Yes. Room. <laughs> yes. Don't yeah. take need to take her out that much, lah. Really. Uh, when they are much more stabilized, I think. You know. Yeah. Anyway. I think, yeah. 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 Not so safe outside. How is the? Okay. Can you see her? Can yeah, you I see him? Yeah. Yeah. I can see. So cute. He, How? What is her? What is his weight? His weight, his birth weight is big, big. He is nine, nine six. Nine six. His weight is four and a half kg. Four and a half kg. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> there is it. Yeah. So he is <coughs> gain, oops, gaining bank his birth weight. So, wow. right. He has. Today is his seventh day. Ah. I think all his meconium has all come out, and uh, he's on uh, his changing change stool now. Yeah, he takes sometimes take he needs about like four ounces. <laughs> you oh. know. Yeah. That's yeah. It was uh, ever see the first couple of days? Of course, mom don't have much milk. Yes. And then we were. A lot of debates about the you not know, all people all, all the kinds of way of breastfeeding and restriction or, or whatever you know, but uh, I think we we overcome that, and so he had some formula to top up, and so he's very happy now. 
yeah so he top up to to it's basically an ounce an hour you know for the baby so um so he's quite happy like this morning he's he's at six o'clock he had two ounces and he's quite happy <laughs> you know but be, because he settled that at four o'clock so two hours one ounce an hour you know other times he's not satisfied he's sometimes you really go up to four ounces you know you just wait patiently close his eyes open his eyes again and look at you and then wait and, and then nothing close his eyes again and open his eyes and never sleep you know <laughs> till you've given him the last drop and then he's satisfied yeah he so looks now, very healthy huh? he is very healthy yeah. He is very healthy. Yeah, very healthy. Oh, I think the nice daddy nice. fed the mom very well. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah. The daddy was Hello, very happy. little baby Joseph. Oh, this uncle's the same name as you. <laughs> Joseph. Same. Hello. I'm, I am Joseph Hudson. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, yes Hudson, because that's a the Lord, nice name. Huh? Going, the prophetic mm. word is that you'll be a provider, right? Mm. Provider in the end times. Yeah. Mm. Yes. yes. And Hudson is the faithfulness of Hudson, basically. They, are, they wanted mm. the name, they felt, because mm. Hudson is faithful to very faithful, full of faith. Full of faith, basically, Hassan is a man of faith. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you want to say some words about healing? So how how is the did you do your homework? <laughs> That's the most important thing. Did you manage to do the homework for the healing? Pastor Ku is asking me to say something about healing. Did you do homework? From the, the, did you manage to do any homework? Kundi, <laughs> always ask me. Did you manage to do any homework? I only do the first and second only. Oh. <laughs> do, do you mean the one according to the book? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, and, I, I, yeah, for the uh, assessment only. Two, I do, but I be go through the the recording, uh, the recording mm. that uh, for the previous session, uh, yeah. Because I also almost forget already. Yeah, yeah that's what we thought. It's better to do revision. Mm. Yeah. That's why I also yeah. like uh, listen to it. Uh, yeah, right. Read through the text. Yeah, yeah. I think it is good to do that. Otherwise, you'll be just doing it, uh, you know, uh, just go through it. The, the ordeal is no, no point. Yeah. We will take it a step at a time. Yes. How about the others? <laughs> Would you say anything? I'm trying to catch up. You're trying to catch up? I've missed, I've missed quite so many. <laughs> yes. I mean, for myself, I've been through it a number of times, you know, I have to go through a number of times and I, a lot of things that I have, uh, say, for example, uh, the last time we did was on, on ungodly so tired, right? No, no, so what was it? The, um, the last lesson, the last lesson was on um, so uh the ungodly uh, beliefs, right? So I said I was stupid, right? Remember? So, I mean, I have done that before, but I, it wasn't in the perspective or uh, as I did it the last time uh, I, like when I redo it again. And so there were many things that the Lord has spoken to me that I'm to follow up because the, the, the next lesson in chapter six is talking about uh, what does God say about, you know, these beliefs, you know, what, how do you purpose in the spirit, 
uh, to, that the Lord purpose in the spirit to change for you. <laughs> so a lot of verses that the Lord will, in, in the uh, uh, journaling, the Lord will, will tell you quite a lot of things. Uh, the verses to follow up, right? I, I, there are many I have not even uh, started yet, you know, but I still have to go back many times to, to purpose in the spirit, uh, the things that he said, you know, so that the healing and the, um, yeah, the healing will continue. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is see, progressive. Though. It's progressive. Yeah. Thank you. I see that. <laughs> I think we are going back to the class. I think he's getting hungry now. <laughs> Does he cry a lot? Does he cry a lot? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> huh? Okay, uh, when he's hungry. Oh, this only is when he's hungry. Yeah. Oh, that's the daddy. Eh? No, oh, that's Faith. Oh, that's <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Faith. How are you, bro? I'm doing well. Cut down your mouth. Cut down your mouth. Long time, how do you know? Cut down your mouth. You want to see them? Say hello. No. Okay. All right, we are coming back to class before the baby cries for milk. <laughs> ah. All right, we are back. <laughs> but there was quite a long this long discussion, <laughs> this distraction. So share screen. All right. Okay, we have about uh We have about an hour, right? Is that right? We have about half an hour to go. Okay. Well, the roots of all wounded hearts, right? We've just read that. And uh, it's just to refresh us, right? That uh, we have mom's side and dad's side. And there are problems that we need to deal with, right? Now... And um, generous, generational sins and curses have sin energy, uh, which passes down from previous generation. Both spiritual blessing and spiritual curses can be passed through family line. We cherish and build on blessings and we break the curses, right? Now, the word energy or um, is to be understood as the power to do work. Sin has a power to work, to do things, right? And uh, we don't usually talk about energy in uh, inner healing because energy seems to be uh, a word you know, connected with science and engineering. But there is a spiritual science and engineering at work in the Bible, right? The Bible uses the word energy a lot, right? So uh, that's why we're using it here. Now, generational curses and blessings pass since energy down through the family line, right? Exodus 20 verse 5, right? And Deuteronomy 
7 verse 9 reminds us that um, no, God, right, the Lord your God and the jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers, right, on the children, on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, right, Exodus 20. And God who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments, right? So what is the, um, the key difference? Well, it's between those who hate God and those who love God. And today, at the very heart of this uh, healing course, we are to check our uh, attitudes, right? Check our motive and check our uh, uh, and what why is the why is the third one um, motive and our character right attitude motive and character a m c a m c attitude motive and character and and us where do we belong where do we belong do we uh, belong to the group that love him or hate him, right? Uh, where are we now? Of course, we all would say we love God, all right? Until, right, we discover that we love God, but we forget about God so easily. And in fact, we begin to do things to love ourselves, to love other people, to love the world, to love many, many, many things else except to love God. Well, we know that you know, that kind of attitude, right, of not loving God consistently, not, not loving God uh, from the heart truthfully, right, is uh, a bad attitude right? A wrong attitude, right? And the motive, why are we not loving him 24-7? Why are we not loving him consistently, truthfully? Well, maybe we are looking at other things. Look at other sources where we can get what we want, right? And then the character, right? Is a good character or bad character all plays a part in whether we are truly loving God or not, right? Now, when we begin to be honest with ourselves and say, you know, I, I really want to love God, but I am not a very good lover, right? I, I don't know how to love and I'm not consistent in loving and all that. Of course, Right, that is the reality of husband and wife. That is the reality of friends. That is the reality of relationship, even in the church. That our kind of love is so broken, right? But of course, we don't talk like that, especially when people are, you know, courting, getting married. They think that their love is perfect. Oh, you know, that guy loved me so much. Or that, that girl loved me so much. You know, we want to get married. And at that time, love is blind. <laughs> at that time, you know, nobody wants to talk about, hey, our love is very broken. Very broken. And, uh, but of course, we don't talk about broken love because we don't have a solution. We don't know what else to do. Well, if you don't have an answer to broken love, then you, you might as well just pretend that love is perfect. Right? And um, well, that is the lies of Satan. Right? We are not facing reality. We are not facing the truth. Right? 
But God says, if you hate me, right, the sins and the curses will go to the third and fourth generation. And, um, and it is not a, a matter of by chance. It is God visiting, God bringing that to the third and fourth generation. And we would say, hey, but God, the third and fourth generation don't even know what the sin is. Don't even know what the problem is. How come they suffer for it? But God say, that is why I am warning you. If you continue to hate me, your hatred will pass down to pass down the line to the third and fourth generation. And you would begin to see that they not only hate God, but they also hate you as father, as husband, as grandfather, great-grandfather, great-grandmother, great-grand, well, all that, right? Now, so the hatred uh, energy begin to cause all the brokenness and wounded hearts. Amen. But God also promised, if we love him, right, we have a thousand generation uh, that is going to be blessed. God is going to keep his promise, keep his covenant, keep his loving kindness to your family for a thousand generation. Well, that itself is worth, right, uh, understanding this whole cause. Right. Now, the next one is what is not passed down through the family line? Now, Ezekiel 18 2, 4 is very important. Right? The guilt of the ancestors is not passed down. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sin will die. Right? Now, that is the, uh, the law, right? The sinners will suffer for their own sin. But, but however, if I continue the same pattern of sin, then I have the guilt of my own sin which will bring about a death process within me. Well, the guilt of the ancestors is belong to the ancestor. They did the wrong thing. But if their attitude, their motive, their character is passed down and we continue and not break it, then we have seen ourselves, right? That is why, you know, this passing down uh, is a very much an, an, an energy uh, passed down, right? What can be passed down through the family line? Well, alcoholism and all kinds of addiction, uh, all kinds of physical sicknesses, all kinds of emotional and mental problems, Besetting sin, bullying, sexual sin, child abuse, anything. All types of spiritual blessing, anointing, gifting, and passion. The sign of a wounded heart need to be examined to determine the root cause of this heart wound. This can be a momentary painful ex exercise, but the ultimate healing is worth the pain. And if the wonderful counselor is guiding the healing process, the pain is minimized. So the lesson is talking about sins and curses is not nice, but facing it is necessary for us to stop it uh, in our own life so that we will not participate. Right? Some people say, didn't Christ redeem us from the curse of the law? and pour blessing into our life, Christ redeem us from the curse of the Lord, having become, become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. And Jesus did that. Amen. Now, in order that 
in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come down to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, right? Jesus did that so that we will experience the Holy Spirit by faith, right? But again, you need to participate, yeah. Yes, but we need to personally apply what Christ provided at Calvary, all right? I will leave this for you to read because I already have sent you the uh, PowerPoint. Amen. I hope everybody got the PowerPoint to go through. All right. If you don't have, please let me know. Now, prayer to break generational sin. Right. Steps. Number one. All healing begins with repentance and forgiveness. Forgive your parents. Picture yourself as a baby in your mother's womb. See the cross between you and ancestor. Command curses to halt, to stop at the cross of Calvary and fall to the ground. And three, speak the blessings of Calvary upon child. Seeing light, power, energy flowing upon the baby. That is us. Now, the second prayer is about soul ties, right? And... Um, we have got only uh, eight minutes left. I want to just say that uh, the soul ties are like, uh, like domination. Domination is the example of ungodly soul tie, right? Uh, ungodly soul ties exist where one person seeks to dominate, manipulate, or control another, right? Now, this is opposite to the spirit of Christ. Jesus came as a servant to all and laid down his life for all. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a born servant, being made in the likeness of man. Jesus gave his disciples the freedom to leave if they choose to, uh, without calling them rebellious or evil. Now, it is so special to meet with somebody that do not dominate you, that do not manipulate you to get something they want from you or control you physically. Very hard to meet somebody like that. It is wonderful to meet with somebody with Jesus in them that really give you and respect you for the freedom that you have as God has given, right? But DMC, dominate, manipulate, control, DMC, right? Is the power of ungodly soul tie in any relationship. So today, we're going to ask ourselves, have I been DMC to people? Have I have ungodly soul ties with other people, right? And this is very, very dangerous, right? If we have the, the soul ties with others and others with us, right? It need to be cut off. And um, the kingdom relationship, I leave it to you. Uh, prayers to cut ungodly soul tie. Forgive and release and bless the person. Take sword of the spirit in your hand and then cut the wire between you and them. Swing your arm. Pray for Jesus to circumcise your heart. See him cut out bad and put in new. Speak to heart. Right. So that is a summary of what to do with ungodly soul ties. Then last time, when we're together, we deal with ungodly belief, right? Ungodly means, no, God is not king. There is no God's word, no God's spirit in us. There's ungodly, right? Or any belief that contradicts scripture, like I will probably fail. People will reject me. I don't deserve God's blessing. I, I will not have financial freedom. People do, wouldn't accept me. My children will rebel. My sin is unforgivable. I will be 
defeated by my enemy. All these are ungodly belief and also negative expectations, right? Now, we all know that we have this kind of thing, right? And this is the third power at work to destroy us. And many people have this and wants to have healing, right? And not recognize that this is a part of the problem. And so what do we do? Yet all must be repentant of, repented of, right? And uh, this is there more often unconsciously, right? So we need to do even more because um, we are unconscious. And then inner vow is a promise I make to myself of the action I will take in the light of the ungodly belief I hold, right? Now, this is a terrible thing because we believe that you will fail. Well, we make a promise. I will never do that again. I will never attempt. I will not, not do maths. I will never uh, do business. I will never get married. I will never, never. Now, all these are inner vows, right? Now, and that is another root, another energy at work that destroy us. And uh, the unbiblical belief need to be replaced, right? Uh, and this is the process to replace it. And, uh, and the summary of that is there given to you. Now, this is the picture that you see again and again. We talk about generational sins and generational curses. They are the root, right? The foundation. And then we talk about ungodly soul ties. And we talk about negative expectation or the negative belief, ungodly belief and inner vows, right? And then uh, we will be going up to the rest of the house to talk about word curses, traumatic pictures, and eventually we talk about the demonic control, right? The, the, the helpful thing about this picture is that if you want to cast out demon, what do you have to do? You look at this picture, right? You got to remove the walls, you remove the ceiling, you remove the floorboard, you remove the, the roots. Once all these are removed, the, the demon have no place, no protection, right? And you only need to command and the demon will come out, right? And so you see, uh, going through the seven prayers, right, eventually helps you, help us to be released of the demonic power. So these are the, the negative energy that is coming down, right? And there is positive energy, the river of life. Um, and um, Ephesians 1 tells us the word energy, right? Uh, that is used in the Bible. And uh, two sources of spiritual energy, right? Holy Spirit energizes as we worship. Demons energize us negatively. We must replace all negative energy with Holy Spirit energy. Amen. Um, and the heart of the whole matter is that when God is king in the center of our life, our life will be put back to order, right? We'll have true healing of our attitude, our motive, and our character. This is the picture of kingdom in heaven and kingdom on earth in our life. And um, the foundation of healing is hearing the voice of our wonderful counselor, right? And uh, we need to memorize this. Hearing God's voice is as simple as quietening yourself down, fixing your eyes on Jesus, turn tuning to flow and writing or stillness, vision, spontaneity and journaling, right? You pass in the Father's love through two-way journaling. Two-way means you talk to God and you hear God talk to you and you talk to God and you hear God talk to you and journal, right? This is how we rest in the love of our Father. Right now, 
Okay, ngam ngam, 8.31. So, uh, with this revision, I hope you will uh, be able to go back to your book and to the notebook if you haven't done exercise. And like Kun Lee say, go back to the online assessment, online quiz, right? That will help you uh, understand even deeper, right? Uh, if you have bought the material, if you have not yet bought the material, um, let us know uh, or let Kun Lee know that, that someone here will be able to connect you to John Ng, who will be able to uh, help you get all this material for 50 ringgits, cheap, cheap, right? Now, so, uh, so today, uh, that is all we uh, have time for to go through the revision, right? Uh, so next Thursday, same time, 8 p.m., right? And then, uh, well, 7 a.m. for us, right? Now, I'm just going to ask Catherine. Catherine, can you close in prayer for us? Father, we praise, we thank you for today's session. Lord, we praise you, we thank you. We ask, Lord, that what is spoken or taught, Lord, will not be only in our mind, Lord, but in our hearts. Like you will write, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything, Lord, that you want us to know and know your direction, Lord, in our life and our ministry and our calling election, Lord, that you continue to bring into us, Lord, whatever we can, Lord, to be a blessing unto others, Lord, as a light and a salt of this world. Father, thank you for each and every one of us here as we have a heart, Lord, to know you more, Lord, and to love you and to love others, Lord. For we know that this is the end time, and Lord, that it is time, Lord, for truly, Lord, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. Lord, we ask you, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring in more laborers, Lord, into the field. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for Ram Ku and the family. And Lord, we thank you for his love, Lord, to, to minister to us and his, uh, continue to teach and to share. Lord, bless him mightily and anoint him mightily, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. 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 Well, are there any questions? Um, or sharing before we close. Hi, Jean. Good to see you here. 